Let me jump off to our series today. We're on our third week of our series called The Fine Line. And we're looking at finances. We're going to talk about money and how God views money. And we're not talking about the practical stuff of money, but really going to the heart of what money does to us. Or, according to our week one, the love of money would do to us. No, so, ang ganda lang ng sa First Timothy because as Paul wrote this to Timothy, he shares to us, warns us, and instructs us. So, ang dami niyang, ang dami niyang angulo no, na, that would be readily applied in our lives that would result in uh, something supernatural in us. That's why in the New Testament, the world that was not Christian would look at the church and they would say, Grabe, no? iba yung nasa church. What they're doing there is something that's supernatural. And because of that, yung level lang of uh, stature and respect that the people had with the New Testament church, though they were persecuted at times, but, but when the Romans would see them, they would, see, they would say something's different about that group of people who are preaching the gospel. And it's not just all preaching, but in, the, in their lifestyle, it is also shown. And so I'd, I'd like to review week one and week two Kasi we're going to uh, tatahi po natin yan sa week 3. Okay? For us to better understand week 3, let me just go through the, just the nuggets of week 1 and week 2. In week 1, we talk about 1 Timothy 6.9, which is the main text where it says, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into a senseless and harmful desire that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Bible talks about when your desire is just for money. That you work just for money and you're just desires to be rich. Nothing wrong about being rich. But if that's the motivation of your heart, it's all about money. It's all about accumulating. The Bible says you've fallen into a trap. And that's what the world does. And what is the trap? The trap is this. That rich is a moving target. So when you ask people, Mayaman ka ba? Are you rich? Most of them would say no because they would compare themselves to others. And if that's you, you've fallen into a trap. Because you feel like you're not rich and we always want more and that's what the world tells us you need more you, you need to accumulate more and now week one we said to be content is to acknowledge that life is simple and god is good a lot of us are going life is to be is to say life is so good sometimes life might not be that good but we have to understand god is good always so life is simple as Christians, we have to understand simply lang ang buhay. You don't have to live an extravagant life to, to experience joy and happiness. The Christians live a very simple life. They live a very generous life because they know they have everything in Christ. Kompleto na sila. Love na sila ni Lord. So, when it comes to wealth, they know it's just money. It's not the most important thing in the world. Last week, we talked about what money does to us. It makes us, number one, arrogant. It makes us proud. And secondly, over time, our source of hope now is on the uncertainty of riches. Ang ganda kasi we are tayo ni Paul that riches is uncertain. You can be rich today and poor tomorrow. So if you put your hope in riches, you're walking on not on solid foundation. You're walking on shaky foundation. And a lot of people have been destroyed because of that. And that, again, is a trap. Okay? And, uh, Wealth, if uncontrolled, would possess its possessor. Yung love of money na baka na yan eh. It's so dangerous, it's so subtle and dangerous, you don't know that money is now possessing you. We're bad at being rich, technically. All of us here, most of us here, maybe not all, but most of us here, in the world standard, we are actually rich. If you understand this message, you have food, you have clothing, you have shelter, you are actually in the top 20% of the wealthiest people in the world. But we're just bad at being rich because we think life is complex. And we try to make it complicated. Yun naman, simple naman talaga buhay, hindi lang yun, may just pa ako. And I have a God who loves me and accepts me, and now I can live this out in community. Okay? For the truly rich people, money is not the most important thing. They know that money is important. Sino di ito gusto niyo ng pera? Tasa ka na. You like money. Alright. Now look under your seats. <laughs> yes, it is important, but it is not the most important thing in the world. Right? 
And only the truly rich knows that. But if you are bad at being rich, you would live your life trying to accumulate more and more because you think that would bring satisfaction and contentment. So when I possess, but who possesses me that forms the core of my being? Who controls you? If it's the love of money, your lifestyle, your decision-making process, okay? uh, your language would reflect that. Lalabas at lalabas yan. Yung love mo for money. So lahat na lang na makita mo pwede pagkakitaan. Why? It's always about the money. You do things just for the money. It has now possessed you. There was this man who was problematic because there was a time he was earning 10,000 pesos a month. Sabi niya, pastor, no 10,000 pesos a month, nabibigay ako 1,000, no problem. But then God promoted me. I started earning 50,000 a month. Grabe job times 5. So now I'm giving 5,000 a month. No problem, I was earning 45,000. But God promoted me again because of my faithfulness. Now I'm earning 500,000 a month. And I'm giving 50,000 uh, 50, a month. Pero pastor, may malaking problema. I was promoted again. And I'm earning a million a month. And I'm giving 100,000 a month in tithes. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know what to do. Sabi na pastor kami. Lord, I pray for my brother. I pray, Lord, that he would earn 10,000 a month again. <laughs> when you start having, hindi po totoo yung kwenta na yan. Pero minsan, laki ng problema mo. Nakakalimutan mo, sobrang bait ni Lord sa'yo. That God is good. 10,000, you can survive. Now you have a million and you can't even survive when you're having a hard time giving away 100,000. It's like the illustration of the Pringles I gave one of my kids. I said, here's 10, 10 chips, Pringle chips. I get, can I have one? It's mine. What my daughter didn't know was she can swim on Pringles. Daddy can give you all the Pringles that you want. Well, not all. Because <laughs> once you pop, you can't stop. Okay, so... Para <laughs> Kung makuha mo lang yung nature ni Lord, sobrang generous ni Lord. You can never outgive God. But then, our mentality always is, yun nga eh, parang kulang, kailangan ko. Pag binigay ko, mas kaunti na lang. Right? And it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, the past two weeks, we've been looking at the heart. Right? Sa puso. The love of money, greed, discontentment, selfishness. Today, Paul now wrote to Timothy and gave some prescription. Ito na yung kailangan mong inumin. Para bang kung may sakit ka, may high blood ka, tapos naubo ka sa doktor, hindi kanya muna bibigyan ng prescription. Ito, inumin mo, aspirin. No, no. Sabi ng doktor, gusto mo pa bang mabuhay? Yan yung first two weeks eh. Dealt with the heart before the medicine. And now Paul gets practical and writes down prescription on how we can fight the love of money and discontentment. And he shares to us four things. Do good, be rich in good works, be generous, and be ready to share. Now, this is hard. This is hard prescription. Some of you are saying, mali ata yung week na pinasukan ko. Paul now tells us, here's how you apply this. You do good, be rich in good works, be ready to share and be generous. So how do we do this? Paul now tells us, here's how you become good at being rich. But here's the number one enemy when it comes to applying this. Ano yung enemy natin? Yan yung tinatawag natin, W-I-I-F-M principle. Ano yung WIFM? Hindi po yung bagong radio station. Okay? What that means is, what's in it for me? The mentality of people in this world always, even when it comes to being generous, is the question, what's in it for me? If I help, what's in it for me? If I help you go through that, may utang na loob ka may sana. There's always that what's in it for me. Sa Tagalog, a sad principle. Ano sa atin dyan? Yeah. Kaya nga sa Syria, nagkakagulo dalang daming asad. Di ba? So, the asad principle is, and it's so sad, no? Because it's always about what can I get? What would that benefit me? Why do I go to church? What's in it for me? 
Lord, will you bless me if I go to church? Okay, I'm going to church. Okay, Lord, I'll give my tithe. Lord, now what's in it for me if I give my 10%? The motivation is wrong. It goes back to selfishness. It goes back to greed. I'm not saying the Bible is not true when it says you can never outgive God. Diba? Uh, diba verse 6, 6, niglig, umaapaw, you know, what you give, it will return. That is good. That is the promise of God, but that is not the issue. The issue is the heart. Is it still out of greed and discontentment that's why you tithe or you give or you move in generosity or you're giving for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Christ's love for me. That's why I give. Question is, what's in it for me? And that's what people ask all the time. Oh, tutulong ako sa mahirap ha, what's in it for me? Ay, ayaw ko na mag-raise for life. Bib na lang, wala nang shirt. Huwag na lang. It's always, what can I get? And we operate on that spirit most of the time. And the scripture tells us move in the different spirit. So now, I want us to look at the story in the Bible that talks about greed and selfishness and generosity in one story. In John 12, verse 1, this is the story of Lazarus and Mary and Jesus. See, Lazarus was the guy who was raised from the dead. Kung alam niyo yung kwento, no? Patay na si Lazarus ilang days na, mabaho na, dumating si Jesus, binuhay niya. Siya yung unang naborn again, literally. Now, six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So this guy came from the dead and Jesus was there visiting him. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Lazarus was alive here. He was reclining like this. He was having dinner with Jesus. And Martha was serving. And while they were eating, something happened. Verse 3. Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume of pure nard. No, nard, not lard. Okay? and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. So while they were eating, here comes Mary, kapatid ni Lazarus, and pours out this expensive perfume at the feet of Jesus. How expensive was the perfume? According to the next verse, the cost of the perfume or the value of the perfume is the value of a man's annual salary. Pinigay niya lahat nung kinita niya, nung taon na yung bumili na ng perfume at nilagay sa paa ni Jesus. It was so costly. Now, why would Mary do this? Now, if you look at the context of the story, Lazarus her brother came back from the dead. Do you, have you met a friend who was given a life sentence already? Sir, three months na lang, kukunin na kayo ni Lord. What happens to that man? He goes home, and there's a drastic life change. Why? The death is knocking. He now goes to his friends. Sorry. Yung mahilig sumigap. Ang bayad. Ano? Ano ka dito? Jollibee tayo. Nagbabago, di ba? Yung nagka-cancer, tapos nawala. Di ba? Nung nagka-cancer, parang, bro. Ika, church na tayo. Church. Nung nag-remission, bah! But when you face death, what happens? When you face death, what happens? You start to realize life is so short. And I've been investing on something that doesn't really matter. Now I want to invest in something that matters. And now, business is not as important. Nobody needs in his deathbed regretted spending more time with his family, spending more time with his spouse, or worshiping Jesus more. Wala rin sa deathbed nag-wi-wish sana, nag-opisina pa ako ngayon. Nobody. Why? you start to see the most important things in life. Mary saw this. Yung kuya ko, patay na, binuhay. Ano pa ba tong perfume? What's one year of wages if I'm offering it to Jesus? 
makes the most sacrificial perfume offering unto the Lord. Wala siyang pakailan. A year's wages. Because for Mary, I'm dead to sin. And I'm alive in Christ. I have everything that I need in Christ. What's this perfume? It might look costly, but I will not offer anything to God that would cost me nothing. And that's a quote from King David. If a person has been touched by Jesus, he knows his love of God, he knows his sin, and he's been forgiven, ano ba ang pera? Ano ba ang 13th month pay? Mauubos din yan. You now have a different perspective because you see, you've already experienced what it means to die. And everybody here who has received Jesus has experienced what it means to die. Because the Bible tells us we're dead to our sin already. Patay na tayo sa sarili nating comfort, sa sarili nating choices and decisions. We're now following the will of God. And so for Mary to do that, it was nothing. Go home after this preaching and ask yourself this question. Have your boy abunda moment and look at the mirror. And then look around your house and ask this question. How many things in my house do I actually really need? Turo mo. Kailangan ba yan? Buksan mo yung, buksan mo yung shoe cabinet mo. Dahil, how many do you really need? But then the world will tell you, you need one more pair. You need one more of that toy. You need one more of that shirt. You need one more of that bag. But how many do you really need? I'm guesstimating 70% of what's in your house you don't actually need. I know. I checked my house. <laughs> really? Maraming bigay, no? Kaya yeah, minsan pag Pasko, parang huwag na kayo magbigay. Dami na namin regalo. Ako lang yun. Bibigay din namin. Mamaya, mabigay pa namin sa inyo. <laughs> Ay, Pastor, regalo namin yan sa inyo. Ay, oo nga, oo nga. Because until you find the ultimate treasure, you can never move in generosity. Pag hindi ka contento sa relationship mo kay Lord, it will never be enough. It will never be enough. You can never move in generosity until you know that Jesus is your ultimate treasure. That your relationship with the Lord is the most important thing in life. There will always be that one thing of more. And I need more. Now, Mary poured the perfume, one of the disciples, one of the Victory Group member from a prestigious school said, but Judas was coming. One of his disciples who was about to betray him said, why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? 300 denarii was a year's wage. Sana. Grabe. Ilang scholar makakapag school. Pinigay lang kay Lord. May point, no? May point eh. Sabi siya, grabe naman. Ilang mahirap ang matutulungan. Sayang. Judas, now, what's troubling about this verse? What bothered Judas so much? It wasn't his, but he's affected, no? Pansin niyo, minsan may friend kayo, nagbigay na ka naman. Oh, nag-bless na. Marabi naman. Pinigay pa niya. Hindi mo nga pera, nakikialam ka. Ganun si Judas eh. Affected. Marabi naman. Now, in verse 6, he said this, not because he cared about the poor. But why? Because he was a thief. He was already counting. Sayang. Because he would put his hand on the money bag and get some. And you, he used it to help himself to what was put into it. He was got 300 denarii. Kaya kong dumake what lang 60 denarii sa ayam. It wasn't to help the poor. It was to help himself. 
He was moving in the what's in it for me principle. I will be a follower of Jesus. Kasi kay Jesus yung two loaves of bread and fish na mumultiply. Madami ako na huuwi. Magbobolong din ako dahil may sashit ng Milo na pwede kong uwi. There's always that what's in it for me. And Judas was thinking this way. You see, most of question giving, most of question generosity, and almost all that I've encountered who question the practice of tithing are not the tithers, are not the givers, and are not the active members of the church. They're what you call the whiners. A healing ma complain. We are a whining generation. Just check your Facebook. Fifty percent of your friends are whiners. Traffic. That's an epic. Epic. Tano. <laughs> eh, bukas din naman kayo walang epic traffic. Eh. What? What are you whining about? We whine. We're an entitled generation. What's in it for me? And we think this way. We think everything revolves around me. I need to have a part of the pie all the time. Kaya nga sobrang counter-cultural si Jesus. No, no, no. It doesn't revolve around you. Sometimes you don't get what you want. You're whiners. Some of the most stingy people that I've met are people who complain a lot. But I've never met someone who's depressed and generous. Pansin nyo ba yun? May nakilala ba kayong sobrang generous pero yung kilay dikit? Ako lang, di ba? <laughs> yung laging kunat kang hirap. Hindi, pag generous ka, sa'yo ng buhay eh. Yung kuripot. Laging kulang eh. Right? Because there's always that what's in it for me. Judas questioned because he was a thief. Reminds me of a verse in Malachi. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do, you, how do we rob you? Diretso na si Malachi. In tithes and offering. I'm telling you, this is one of the most offensive verses in the Bible. Goes to the church. Alam niyo, iba sa inyo dito, magnanahan ko kayo. Uy, Diyo, sino mo? Bigay niyo ako 20 pesos eh. Malay. Malay. No, you're robbing God. Now, how do we rob God? Tides and offering. Hindi ka nagtatides. Hindi ka nag-offering. Sa sambong pringles, isa lang hiningi ni Lord. Hirap ka pa. Binilahan pa. Oh, Lord, ito. <laughs> <laughs> Parang, dami mo pang gram. Isa na lang ang hinihingi. Eh, diba? And he says, in fact, now, please, okay, I don't talk about this every week. I just need to talk about this now because this is the principle that I'm saying. Right? And I'm proud of our church because you are givers. You're tithers. And that's why we see our church blessed. And we bless a lot of church plants, missionaries, uh, campus missionaries. We're doing that all the time. Why? Because we're givers. Right? But what I'm saying is this is the nature, the culture of the world. What's in it for me? I can't even give what God has given me a certain percentage. And I whine and I complain. But Malachi did not stop there. Kung kala mo na offensive yung verse 8, yung iba, grabe naman, offensive, tight-tight na naman pinag-uusapan. Malachi did not, eh, in verse 9, bumahanat pa. You are under a curse. <laughs> yung iba, ako. Lalagay kita sa top gear. <laughs> Papasikating kita, sinabi mo yun Grab. Pero malaki, walang takot eh. Curse ka, bakit? Gusto mo ma-bless ka, ang damot mo. Sino sa inyo, yung anak nyo, pag binigay mo na sa pumpringa, sumihin ka ng isa, ayaw niya magbigay, bibigyan mo pa ng bete. Ano lang tinuro mo sa anak mo? Anak, okay na maging swapang, ito pa bete. Basta happy ka. Smile. Oh, he's okay. <laughs> And that's the culture. Oh, when we talk about money, it might be so offensive eh. No, no, no. It's God's money. That's why we don't just teach 10%. We teach you how to handle 90% of what God has given you. That's why we have talks every Wednesday. 
Why? We want you to be faithful with what God has given you. Palaguin niya yan. Be a blessing to others. God was just saying, basta balik mo lang yung ten sa amin. And this is the tithe. It's not even the offering. Generosity is going beyond what is required of us, which is more than 10%. In fact, the New Testament church, according to Bible scholars, would give 23 to 26% of their income. Kaya naman pala, lumago yung simbahan sa New Testament, it's because of the supernatural giving of the church. Even the poorest of the poor, poorest church would give to the kingdom of God. But then it did not end in verse 9. Sabi ni Malakai, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. What was God communicating to us? If you look at it in a bigger context, God is saying, I'm a generous God. I love to give. I am blessed when my kids are blessed. I want to bless my kids. But more than the material blessings, I want my kids to be like me. To be givers. To be generous. Kasi, si Lord, pag nakuha ang buso natin, kuha niya na lahat eh. yeah. It's not after our wallets, it's after our hearts. Are you generous? Am I generous? God was saying, I want you to have my heart. I want you to be generous. Balik tayo sa mga bata. No? What is the first, clearest word that comes out on most of the kids today? Surprisingly, it's not mama, mommy, or daddy. They couldn't mention mommy and daddy. It, mama, dada. It's not clear. What's the clearest word? You know what word? Mine. Kung kayo ng mga anak to sa kitchers daw, ah. Janice, okay. De. Mine. It's so clear, right? In a kid's mouth. Mine. Yeah. Mine. Ang linaw nung mine, eh. Napansin nyo ba pag naglalaro ang mga anak natin? May benteng laruan dyan. Kukunin ni Panganay yung una. Si Bunso nandito, tatakbo. Mine. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> may re-replay lang ako kung ano sa bahay lang. Okay. Pa, may benteng laruan. Ba't yung pinagagawa yung isa? Hindi mo naman pinapakilaman. Ng... Eh, nawa ka. Eh, that's mine. Pag bumaba yung chicken sa dining table, di ba? Unahan eh. Why? What's in it for me? It's mine. We're entitled. So you cannot move in generosity if you think that way. That it's yours. It's not yours. It's God's. So you've got to learn how to let go. It's not yours. If you see this picture of what Mary did, This is a picture that life is now different for a Christian. You now see life differently. It's not about what I accumulate or what I receive. It's what I give. Why? This picture shows to us my hope is in Christ. Not on the one year salary that I have. Some of our financial, some of the limitations that you have is this, your salary. Biggest limitation. Biggest excuse always is salary. Need the sweat of I cannot be generous. The greatest hindrance for, for God to move in your life is because of your salary. You cannot be. But this picture shows to us now that I have my treasure in Christ, this is just money. This is a picture of contentment. This is a picture of saying that money is not mine, it's Christ. I'm giving it back to Him. Money is to fulfill not my purpose, but God's purpose. 
And that's a picture of Mary washing the feet of Jesus with her annual salary. Now, let's go to the prescription. Sabe, be good, be rich in good works, be generous, be ready to share. How do we apply this? Give you some examples. Number one, do good. This is one of our members, Ricardo. When we had APEC, there was an article that came out that the police were sleeping on cardboard, scrubbing sacrifice. You read that article, shared by millions, right? Now, aside from the 50, 60% who complained, there were 40, 50% who actually praised the police and said, wow, good sacrifice, ganyan, we're proud of you, grabe, apek hati kayo, parang ganyan, basta, just, just, just putting that in social media. When I read that, I saw the likes. There were millions of views, thousands of likes. But Carlo went and did something than the usual. He actually prepared pasta for 100 of the policemen and went to the camp. Pagdating niya sa camp, 800 pala yung mga police na nandoon. So, kawawa yung 700. Grabe ka, Carlo. Then, fed 100 policemen to show his appreciation. This picture is a picture that communicates to us it's easy to like good. Ngayon sa Facebook, may heart na eh. May smile pa. Dami ng reaction sa Facebook ngayon. So easy to like good, right? So easy to look good. But to get out of your comfort zone, prepare something for someone, and go out of your way to deliver it, that's doing good. Our world today kasi is exposed to that eh. Ang bilis, maki activist kami. Virtual. After mo ganyan eh, manunood ka na ng YouTube. Di ba? It's nothing to you. It's easy to like good. To do good is something else. Paul tells Timothy, you do good. You get out of your way, get out of your comfort, and you do something good. Okay? It's easy to look good. It's easy to like good. It's not easy to do good. And Paul tells us, you do good. As Christians, you do good. Hospitals, educational institutions, mostly were started by Christians. Outcast of society, it was the Christians who took care of them. Went out of their way to help those who are dying. Christians will do that. Why? Because they're commanded to do good. Because God has been so good to them. So you do good. Number two. Be rich in good works. Some of us might be saying, Eh, wala akong masyadong pera talaga, Pastor. Talagang gipit. Not an excuse. Paul says, be rich in good works. You can actually volunteer your time. I'm a student na ako. Wala nga akong, wala nga akong allowance eh. Sariling tayo eh. Be rich in good works. Volunteer. In a charitable organization. Volunteer in church. There's so many things to be generous with. It's not all about the money. Be rich in good works. Magaling ka magluto, pagluto mo yung mga nangangailangan. May bibili ng gulay, ikaw na magluto. You're rich in good works. Instead of whining, do something. Instead of whining, do something. That's why I appreciate our victory group leaders. For the past eight years, there's no complaint among our victory group leaders. Because instead of complaining, they do something. That's why they're leaders. But if your principle in life is what's in it for me, you'll always be a consumer. Lagi dapat meron about you. Dapat merong benefit sa'yo. Paano pag walang benefit sa'yo ito, sabi ni Lord, gawin mo? Will you do it? Be rich in good works. Thirdly, Sorry, in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 2 and 3, it says, Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their poverty welled up in rich generosity, for they gave even beyond their ability. This was a church in Corinth that was so poor. Maybe in modern day context, ito yung mga simbahan na yung may hollow blocks lang. Tapos di na pinturahan, tapos yung bobong. Pag nag-worship sila, yung luha ni Lord. 
kasama nila. In extreme poverty, welled up in rich generosity, they gave beyond their ability. They were rich in their good works. They were rich. Kung anong meron tayo, yun na lang bigay natin. Kung di man cash, something else. Let's give something. Thirdly, be generous. Generosity starts at home. The people who work for you, question, are they justly compensated? Huwag na tayo mag-start sa real life eh. Real life kasi mga scholars, di mo kilala. Paano na si Manang, na sambot ako na nasa sayo, yung anak niya, di makaskulahan kasi baba ng sweldo. Are they justly compensated? It starts at home. Among your staff. Are you the one just upgrading your standard while they continue to remain in poverty because you're, they're not justly compensated? Generosity starts at where? At home. Starts at home. Merong, merong kami pre practice na principle since two years ago. It's called the Palenque Principle. Bago to. Ibig sabi, pag nagpapalenque kami ni Tami, when we go to the market, in the muddy market, okay, pagka mahirap, huwag mo nang tawaran. Na, pabili. Puji Apple. Kano? 25, 23 na lang. Ilang ho ko kunin niya? Dalawa ho. Apat na piso lang, tinawaran mo ba? Kahit nga 40 pesos, tatawaran mo pa ba yan? Tapos kukunin mo, kakainin mo sa air condition na kotse mo. Sila saan sila uuwi? Right? When it comes to the poor, huwag na kayong tawad. Piso, dalawa, lima piso. Bigay mo na yan. Right? Give it. Department store. Pag mamayari ng uncle ko. <laughs> Tumatawad ka ba sa SM? <laughs> Mahal na mas. Hindi, di ba? Kung anong price yun. Sana pupunta yun sa mayaman eh. Eh, mahirap. Tinatawaran mo ba? Tindi mo. Pag Pasko pa, tindi. Pagpunta mo sa palagay, Uy, pa yung isa ha? Pamasko mo sa akin, ha? Pumuha ka pa. <laughs> Baliktad. <laughs> Yan yung naghihirap, hindi ikaw. Yan yung 24 hours, bukas ang panengke. Huwag mo nang tawaran yung dalawang piso, limang piso. Bigay mo na yan. Eh, Pastor, baano pag mahal? Di huwag mo bilhin. Right? Kaya, gano'n na lang minsan. Yun na yung palengke. Magkano yung apple na yan? 50? Actually, ayaw naman ako ng apple. Saging na lang. <laughs> Pero wag mo nang tawaran. Alam niyo naman yan, di ba? Pag nasa palengke, sila pa ngayon nagkakaltas eh. Magbayad mo. Why? They're living in poverty. Isa pa ang nakita ko since malapit ng Christmas. Magkano ang budget niyo sa mga kaibigan niyong mayaman? <laughs> Uy, mayaman. Nakakaya naman kung ito lang bibigay ko. Taasan. Dagdagan ng 100 pesos ang budget for the rich. And you give them something that they don't actually need. And why do you increase your budget? Because of the what's in it for me principle. Anong sasabihin nila? What would they say if I just give this? Pero yung mahirap, okay na yan. Nabubulok na yan. Bigay mo na. <laughs> yung lang chones, may amag na. Bigay mo na yan. Matutuwa pa sila. May pagkain. The mentality is so wrong. Right? Be generous. Know where to be generous with. And with whom will you be generous? This Christmas, balik ta rin na. Yung barbero mo. Yung waiter kung saan ka lagi kumakain na hindi mo binibigyan ng tip. Tapos nag-God bless ka pa. Bawat ka, God bless. Poripot na hindi ng titip. <laughs> Yun yung gulatin mo, yun yung bigyan mo ng malaki. Huwag na yung kaibigan, huwag na yung pastor mo. Okay na kami. Sana. Pwede, okay na kami talaga. Please, don't give us gifts. Really. Sometimes in Christmas, daming... What do we do with all these gifts? 
pray and ask the Lord, Lord, to whom will I be generous this year? Kinin ako ng wedding bigay. Huwag kang ma-pressure. Kung nung sabihin nila, hindi ako nagbigay. Ganun. Alamin mo, kinin ako lang magbibigay. To be generous. Again, I'm not saying don't give. Huh? Like I have a gift for the staff. But it won't be that costly. Right? And it's okay. It's the thought that counts. The, okay, so, right? Really, it is. And I don't know if they'll even use it. But to a poor person, to my barbero, it would be useful. To my manam, it would be useful. Right? To my waiter, who loves me and serves me, it would be useful. To someone in church who is in need, a single mom who's working eight, nine, ten hours every day, this would be helpful. Be generous. No, saan soil kayo magtatanim. Huwag din sa taman. Huwag sa adik. Huwag mo lagay doon. Sayang. Lagay mo sa nangangailangan. Be generous. Pag mahirap, huwag nang tawaran. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Sabi mo, hindi na kita tatawaran. <laughs> be generous. Okay. Next is be ready to share. Lakas nito, no? kasi sabi niya, be ready to share. It means sharing is premeditated. Pre-planned. Ready na ako. Anytime I'm ready. I won't be caught of guard. I'm always ready to share. What Paul was actually saying, lifestyle to, automatic. Sistema to sa katawan mo. This is your heartbeat. You're generous. You're always ready. When I go to some of the provincial churches, it's ready. There's a few thousands there on my wallet that's for somebody else. For a campus missionary. For a cross-cultural missionary. It's ready. Be ready. It's premeditated. And dyan na yan. Some practical ways. Sa kotse mo, may biskuit na. Para pag may kumatok, bigyan mo na ng biskuit. It's premeditated. Naturoan mo pa yan ako. Mamigay ka. Right? It's pre-planned. The Boy Scout principle, laging handa. Are you ready to share? Okay? I'm gonna end with this. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. But as you excel in everything, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. Don't be just excellent in your work. Don't just be excellent in making disciples. Be excellent in the grace of giving. Be generous people. Be people who freely gives because you freely receive from the Lord. Excel in the grace of giving. I want to end with a story. 2009. We planted the church 2007. 2009. The pastors decided one of the things that we need to fight in the culture of San Juan, specifically Green Hills, is just the spirit of materialism. So brang taas ng materialism sa Green Hills. Sabi nga nila sa Green Hills, you don't window shop, you shop. People go here, they shop. They know what to buy. And we get to buy stuff we don't actually need. Why? It's cheaper. And so, 2009, we said, let's do something about this. Let's not just pray about this. Let's introduce a different spirit in our city. And so we decided we're going to have what we call our Bless Others Sunday. And we challenge our church, go home and for the next seven days, look around your house. Get something valuable, not something that, that's worthless. Something that is of value to you. Bring it to church next Sunday, I want you to pray to whom you're going to give it. Now, it doesn't need to be with people from inside the church. Again, it could be your waiter, it could be your barbero, it could be a tindera na lagi kang. It could be someone that you're going to surprise with generosity. Right? And this is not for the person who receive it, but this is for the person who's going to give. We want to break something in each and every one of us. We didn't know what to expect 2009. The next Sunday came. Gulat na gulat kami sa nangyari ng Sunday night. 
And we knew that was the Sunday that things turned around in our church. Giving started going up. That's when the church started helping other churches. That's where we started expanding. And I believe God blessed us with this one because of what happened in 2009. Stories of people who went to church with their iPad. In 2009, an iPad. Grabe. 50 inch, di ba? LED. <laughs> Grabe, pag may iPad ka, sikat mo, di ba? A girl brought one of her, maybe a dozen, I don't know, three or four, authentic LV bag. Somebody phones. Somebody prepared checks, cash, shirts, na hindi gamit, at hindi dilaw ang just an amazing sight. And then we said, now, after service, I want you now to go and give that thing or whatever you have in your hand to someone. Strangers were crying because their seatmate gave them an iPad. A mom was crying because she got an LV that I think she'll be selling after the service. <laughs> One of our students at the time, was an honor student, a scholar, but has worked for the past three years at Jollibee. Okay. Never experienced being a full-time student. Needs to work every night. Puyat, pero honor student. Galing. Sabi namin, when we heard her story, we said, I think the church can help for her to experience just one year of not working late at nights to go to school at 7 a.m. Maybe we can help cover the tuition and the daily needs. Scholar na siya. Magaling to. When we announced her story in church, after church, literal, I'm telling you, when she was standing, people were lighting up. Alam mo yung music mo siyo? Sikip yan eh. So isang linya yan. People were giving. Alam mo parang, people were just giving. And for the first time, this girl never had to work for, in a Jollibee for that year. And graduated as a scholar. Now she's one of her campus missionaries. She's Kat Napolitano. Mm-hmm. Alam, pag, alam mo, hindi, hindi nila kailangan ng million eh. Minsan nga yung 20,000, nilaki na yun. Gulat na sa 20, 30,000. It's not, it's not big. One of our usher, Jojo, visited her in her house. Alam niyo sa Fantastic Four, see the thing? Because of breast cancer, the cancer is spread through her body if you touch her, it's a cement. But then, once a month, she volunteers as an usher. She spends two hours doing her makeup and putting her to give her best when she's ushering. Now, the story doesn't end there. When we, had, when we were raising funds for our building here, when I saw the list of people who gave, I saw her name. This was a single mom struggling financially, but she was giving. So I had to, I actually had to talk to her and say, why are you giving? You need money. We actually give you money for your treatment. Why are you giving? She said, I want to give. I want to move in generosity. Again, we shared her story to the church. I'm telling you, the line was so long, people were giving for her chemo treatment. Another girl had scoliosis. Si Jack, ilang degree, hindi ko, basta sobrang, yung pang, alam mong pagka, impossible, needed operation, would cost around three, four hundred thousand, I think. Went to Red Cross, got some government help. She needed 300 more thousand. Again, we shared her story. This girl was offered by a man outside church. I will help you, but for something in exchange. When we heard the story, we told her, do not get help from that guy. We'll help. We'll see what we can do. We were a church of a thousand people, 2009. Shared her story. Again, amazing. We have three services and eh? we featured your story. Eh? During that service, people gave to her. Now, it was quite big, 300,000. Hindi na kompleto nung Sunday. 
for Wednesday, I got a call in the office. I heard of the story of this girl who had scoliosis. Magkano pa kailangan niya, pastor? Ako na magpupunod. Now she's she's still her volunteer. She helps in church, and, and she's very fruitful in her work. What she needed that time was not a healer who would command the spine to straighten, but what God demonstrated that week for the church was that there's something supernatural when people of God move in generosity. You literally transform lives and save lives because of generosity. Since 2009, it's never been the same. Up until this year, 2015, our giving has gone up. And really, I'm proud of the church for the church to do. Now, sino sa inyo dito, nandito kayo noong 2009? You were here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. We have mga ten people. You, you experienced that? Okay. Around ten people. We experienced that because we were a church of a thousand at the time. I think less pa na. So next week, here's what I, I want to challenge you again. And, and here's the challenge because we want to break something in every one of us here in church. I want you to go home. Find something valuable. Not your wife, not your kids, or your in-law. Okay? Okay. I know they're valuable, okay? But something you know that is of value. And I want you to pray to the Lord. Lord, kailin akong pwede bigay mo. To whom can I give this? Maybe it's someone from church that I know who's struggling financially. Maybe it's someone who I know has been helping a lot of people. And now, Lord, may mga ganun ba kayang kilala? Loves to help people. But when you help them, they feel awkward. Because they never get to receive. Right? Maybe you have people like that. Right. You know, these are good, so, or some of you, you don't even know, this is an impression in your heart, I need to give this to, to this person that attends at the 11 a.m. service. I always see her or see him. I don't know, but so, there's something there that the Spirit is telling you. I want you to be ready. Or it could be someone not in church, someone outside. Maybe it's an office mate that you'll invite. Sabi mo after church, magbubuffet tayo. And that's how you bless that person. So next week, Randall Tiongson will be preaching here, 9-11-1. Right? So it's a good way to invite your friends whom you're going to treat or give something valuable to that friend aside from the preaching of the word. Right? And surprise them with generosity and say, I'm doing this because I know I'm loved by Christ. And so, it's a good way to invite people in church. But more than that, it's your way of breaking something in you. The greed, the discontentment, or sometimes even the idolatry of stuff. And I say, Lord, this would not possess me. And so, again, next week, November 29th, come here, be ready. Whether it's cash, it's check, it's stuff, car, doesn't matter. Really, somebody gave a car away, uh, Three, four years ago, right? Tremendously blessed. Okay? One car, gave away the car, he needs to ride the public transportation because he gave away his car. Somebody gave away unimaginable riches welled up in simple living. And iba yung nagagawa sa buso eh, pag nagbibigay eh. It's just different. Again, here's the rule. Do not give your pastors. We don't need. Okay? We're exempted from that. We're bringing something next week. Okay? My Bible. I give my Bible. To no, I, really. But don't give the pastors already. Pray for someone in need. Okay? Or somebody that the Lord will impress in your heart. Okay? And, and give them. Okay, but I Walang sabilitan. Kung ayon yung po magbigay. Okay lang. Really, okay lang. Kung bisita ka dito. Wag mo siyado mag-expect na makakuha ka next week. Hindi, laka laka. No. Really, the expectation, don't expect to receive, huh? expect to give next week. So it doesn't matter if you don't receive anything. Alright? Maybe because God knows you don't need it. Alright? And so it's for someone else. Alright? Excel in the grace of giving.